Welcome to the Golden Hind Podcast, where we'll be chatting about everything from Francis Drake's circumnavigation of the world to the Spanish Armada, Elizabethan seafaring pirates, to the adventures of our full-scale reconstruction in the heart of London. This episode of the Golden Hind Podcast is presented by... Hello, my name is Pete, and I'm one of the education officers at the Golden Hind, and welcome to another episode of the Golden Hind Podcast. Now, in the 1970s, our reconstructed Golden Hind crossed the Atlantic Ocean, it sailed through the Panama Canal, and then headed north to San Francisco. And a key part of its mission was to commemorate the 400th anniversary of Francis Drake's landing in California, where he entreated with the local people, assumed he'd been made a king of sorts, and claimed the land for Queen Elizabeth I. He called it Nova Albion, or New England. But is this what really happened? Did Drake really land in California? And if he didn't, why do so many people Hello, think good morning. he did? These are the questions we'll be discussing on the podcast today, because we are joined by Melissa Darby, who is a visiting scholar and research <laughs> faculty in the anthropology department at Portland State University. She is a principal Excellent. investigator and sole proprietor of the Lower the, Columbia Research my, and Archaeology, uh, and has worked for over 30 <laughs> years as an archaeologist and historian in the Northwest. And her recent book, Thunder Go North, The Hunt for Sir Francis Drake's Fair and Good Bay, tackles this vexed question sure. well, of where um, Francis Drake landed the I Golden Hind always in the grew summer up as a, you know, as a little kid with a love Welcome, of Melissa. the water. Well, hello. Um, it's good to be here. It's and great to have you on the show. And and I think it's fair to say that later this is a surprisingly on, uh, fierce historical debate. Um, I mean, and the first I chapter of your was always interested book, in Thunder Go North, is sailing ships and pirates and, and history, what is this that problem whole era of sail. Um, well, for was years and years, me, people so, have believed that Drake uh, was in California. I had and it's, uh, on a it's been a debate among academics and amateur in, uh, historians Miami, alike, Florida and it's gotten quite time. fierce, um, where there's uh, people and just started, uh, are, uh, I was a are tour guide, are, but I started helping out the rigger on board. And then they fight with each other. And compete I would with each other to see how many bit, historians um, can and then uh, um, support the day, their and point of view. Go back and to school in, in the California, evening and, there's and three read bays that old rigging uh, books to try that to understand what it was that I was looking at. Their uh, and, idea that Drake was uh, somehow there. just got fascinated in Oregon, with, there are with two. ship rigging. In Washington uh, State, there's one more so than the rest of the vessel. But there's another kind of the fascination for me. So that was that was on the bounty, the replica that they did me on the bounty. In 1962, well, sometimes with it can get quite uh, quite yeah. heated amongst yes. them, amongst and <laughs> between these groups. So we don't know where Francis Drake landed in 1579. Not for sure. Is that right? Not for sure. No. <laughs> and, and in your book, you talk about something called the gap. Yeah, he, he, he would. He basically he. Was ah, the gap. working up in the rigging well, and he'd say, hey, account, I need something hauled up to me. Can you uh, haul this line? And I'm like, principal uh, what do I do with it? And so that you know, Drake came she would in real, and saw literally right from, the, right from the ground up, degrees, basically, for that kind of education. He showed me how to splice was rope. Um, she was leaking badly and then I, uh, because the stormy I, I, seas off the yeah, northwest coast of America had opened her seams. A book called Darcy Lever's Young Sea Officer's Cheat Anchor was this book written in the early to learn how to up with put the their leak, rigging they together for a ship. And so uh, the coastline it was, it was, was interesting rough, to see how things were done because even that bounty replica, fair and good things bay. were done a little more modern. The there were a lot of shackles that, that were used in some metal fittings. So, it, it, so they went in there it, 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 <laughs> and That whole uh, evolution is what ended up fascinating me with rigging is how it changed from the early, early days to the 20th century. And then sailed across the Pacific Ocean. So I found uh, that Ooh, no, the Harley unfortunately, manuscript she sank of the British in, uh, Library in Sandy, is um, actually a draft in, version uh, of Hackley's Good Lord, I think chat. it was like 2012 It or took me a while something. to figure it out. Um, but when I looked yeah, at this manuscript, yeah, there were cross-outs. Uh, just like um, in the old days. <laughs> little pointed fingers saying, uh, insert text here. And, and, I, and you know, as I was writing my book, I no. realized, well, this is an editor. Someone was... This, this is an edited version, and it's and it's 
just like the final chapter, except for some minor details. Uh, and one after of them that, was I moved up to the Connecticut latitudes. So and the New latitudes York. in this and, draft um, version before the censors uh, one day I uh, was, took a heavy pen to uh, it. I wasn't working on ships at that point. Um, there said were a couple of years where I was on land. 48 degrees <laughs> north, which is and, uh, Vancouver Island or <laughs> southern I, I Canada. And driving along and the Hudson River. And then sailed down to 44 degrees the north where they found their bear sailing in ship the bay. Sticking up so here the trees, we have so this I gap found a way down to this park where they and, said they uh, went and where they actually went Henry and Hudson ship they, the half moon they sitting there put so in the official account I that they went really, down to 38 degrees I believe I, I sat there for literally about half an hour just looking at how uh, that the was rigged of and um, was thinking God, was I really miss grab. this I should really try now, to would Queen get Elizabeth back on the, on and the Sir boat Francis Drake, and um uh, so I called the about 10 degrees uh, organization more of land, that owned it and uh, talked to the England captain just and, to, and to um, bump out Spain. Uh, of course they would. <laughs> uh, made a, a, <laughs> so a sail on her from I see. Um, so you've got Maryland these up to, uh, contemporary, up to New York. Or, I guess near contemporary and, accounts uh, of the voyage. Oh, it was wonderful. It was great. By, yeah, by it some was, distance. Um, where it, it was, you know, there's great landed wooden in the ships, summer and, and all that wooden kind of ships have a certain smell and a certain. And I guess that was my um, next question. Why, why do you think there was so really, much confusion really in the account? How did that happen? And, and it why don't we have like a coming home to be back question. on board? Well, the Spain ship, was Spain so. was their enemy. Was England's enemy at that time? Yes. This was before um, 1588. Uh, I was literally and, just and the driving by and saw the, the tops of, of the masts sticking up. And, so, uh, uh, and there was a lot of intrigue, being on there spies for seven were everywhere. There was and, a lot uh, going on. Yes. <laughs> and Drake's mission was a secret mission. Even even when uh, they sailed out of the harbor, the, most of the sailors didn't know when where I they were going. Started, they thought they were um, going to you know, Egypt I knew to load a, what uh, things were a boatload of currents. How they basically worked, um, but, but soon um, they found out they were going to the for Great the South winter. Sea there was the Pacific, a we did a downrig and of the ship, uh, it was a secret the mission sails under off, the guise the, of piracy. Uh, yards and the Queen wanted and the to be able to, to deny that she had anything and, to do with it. Um, so Drake the, the pirate said that, went out you know, under the Queen's orders work and, uh, <laughs> to, to would go I be interested into in through Magellan Strait and raid up and down the coast and look for lands not settled by any Christian prince. I said absolutely, but she. Had so to have deniability that winter, I because a, things were uh, really tense with Spain. Traditional so, shipwrecker here in the um, states, Jim Barry. It was a secret Barry, mission. When he got a back, great deal the from sailors and everyone on the voyage winter, was uh, and, sworn um, to secrecy on pain and, of death. You know, then we put Not it all back to together in the spring. Know where and, uh, they had been. and after that, so then they that's had Walsingham and, and, and as Drake the, as the and the Queen probably huddled and said, "Well, let's claim down to here." So every year I was in charge of But by the tenants of the time, they couldn't have claimed down to thirty. Although maintenance and putting it all back up and, and, and claimed it, he he legally they couldn't have taken it, but but they <laughs> did, and it was a land grab, and so that's why the latitudes were written in <laughs> well, consistently. Well, I, uh, I was pretty busy on there for those seven so years, although Drake I did, his I did spend the winter then, in the Netherlands the doing research on landing in Oregon Dutch and landing in California century. was. With quite, quite serious, century had quite serious political implications. And but why uh, do you think uh, that the search so I, for this location? I mean, I'm still has captured learning. The imagination I, I, of so many still is so much to learn about, particularly those in California. Whole field, well, California but was a gold rush. Eventually, I did start getting calls from and other I, in 1849. And there was a gold rush, and it drew thousands um, of people for from the East Coast advice or information. to the West Coast. Now they call themselves and they still call themselves the Golden State. California is the Golden State. And they've always identified with Drake. He's their golden son. A yeah, highway I think is named that's after one of the most fascinating him. things about researching the first a English time period that you don't have coast. really you know, written descriptions of where everything is based Drake, on models or paintings or engravings. He had a huge um, amount of you see treasure. things in these pictures, for All instance. All his adventures think, resonated with I don't know what these, that is or why uh, that is. Californians, and, these early Californians, uh, and they embraced we, him we, as a native you know, son. Gear so much so that would see in any of these 1893, paintings. the Episcopal and Bishop of California if you, if you duplicate um, proposed what you see in the painting, a, eventually a Celtic out how stone it's cross used at Drake's Bay to commemorate sense. the first English language <laughs> sermon and first use of the Book of Common Prayer on the soil of what is now the United States. Wow. Yeah. Eventually got put up at uh, <laughs> in, in San Francisco at Golden Gate Park at the highest knob in Golden yeah. Gate Park. And this, uh, this cross 
uh, when it was built, was the uh, largest cross in the world. I spent most of the time in the Netherlands, but I did, uh, my girlfriend and I did a trip blocks. over to London for the weekend. And, uh, and um, still, there's annual that celebrations was my at first Drake's time in England. I had always wanted to go. I'm a Park. huge Anglophile. That's amazing. And, uh, and it's amazing the lengths that people <laughs> oh have gone God, to was, to try and claim and particular and bays and particular areas. walked all over London. According to some accounts of Drake's voyage, Drake left an engraved brass plaque at his London as well. And uh, if this was ever I, it was funny. I kind of knew where everything was, but I had no idea the what the, of the scale landing. was. Like how I think far I'm works. right in saying, Melissa, that in so, the 1930s, uh, we wandered all over and, um, and actually came across yes, Golden Hines sitting there out. at St. Mary Overy Dock. I had no and, idea and, uh, that <laughs> this book would take me to these links, but yeah. <laughs> um, I... Uh, I figured out that the historian that authenticated the plate of brass as an authentic artifact uh, from Drake she was, was the one absolutely that beautifully created. rigged. Um, and this is such a uh, sh- I historian believe at that point just everything was still mostly the, the hemp rigging but, that she had um, been built with. He did it because with. there was, it was just, uh, two it was, women, it was one archaeologist, and, and one so I, just, I, you know, I sat there staring uh, at Eva it and looking again, just London, staring at rigging. And I asked somebody at the gangway there. I was like, he's. And I see there's some rigging work going on. Is there a rigger Drake on board was further north. Um, that I could in talk fact, to? In fact, in 1915, Zulia Nuttall gave this, a like, paper you know, at a very important ancient history bearded conference. Ancient bearded pipe smoking uh, guy that San was going to teach me these really this, bizarre that things that I don't find knew any more about rigging. Wrong, and um, and uh, Drake was so, farther uh, north. I said, yeah, we'll get him for well, you. And I was that, sitting there all waiting, all excited. And it was this guy I knew from the States who came down. And she tried to Dude, publish what are you her doing here? He controlled a lot of the editorial <laughs> uh, boards. Apparently, and these, he had been golden called over to do some work on board. So, did not want to lose Drake, and so yeah, they yeah, pretty small much world, small um, world lunch. shut her down, <laughs> and she went back to Mexico, kind of with yeah, a, probably um, <laughs> a, a bad feeling about these men. And uh, later on, uh, Eva Taylor um, in London, uh, uh, his uh, tutor expert. She found some documents and she wrote a book and she had several articles. And at one point she figured out that uh, the languages that, or the words <laughs> yeah. and phrases oh. <laughs> that Drake and Fletcher, his chaplain, <laughs> recorded, sounded a lot like Chinookan, a Chinookan language. And as soon as that came out, there was uh, uh, a couple other uh, books came out and the, the paradigm nah, started you don't, you to change. You need a crane for that. And people were now no. thinking that, well, wait a minute, Drake might have been on the Northwest Coast. Yep, Let's absolutely. start to look. Well, just as that was coming <laughs> to, coming in, uh, the plate of brass was found on a, on a drive in Marin County, California. A man named Beryl Shin <laughs> uh, went, ha- had a... A uh, flat tire. He went for a hike. Uh, and, uh, I was still working on the half moon. We were in a shipyard um, doing a lot of work on her. We had been in the yard for and about and behold, six weeks. It said Drake on it. And, um, and eventually he, the phone rang he showed and, uh, it to uh, I picked it up Herbert and, Bolton. And this guy said, and hey I think there, this I'm, was sort of an Easter egg hunt. Because, so and so uh, calling from, uh, Herbert Bolton was from a professor Disney Studios and we're doing a University of California at Berkeley. And he'd been telling his students for years, go out to Marin Tony, to we know there's evidence of Drake. Look rigging. for the plate of brass. Uh, now, this for the movie, been and you know, we've asked around, and your name came up a few times, so we thought we'd give you a call. But, um, Would you be interested? And I said, I don't know. No. Maybe in the 30s, people <laughs> bought this kind of stuff more uh, readily. But but anyway, so but they, uh, they said, well, Mr. Shen yeah, brought what, the we'll plate think to Bolton, we'll and he in got week. excited and, uh, and they announced back it and, to and, his um, history class the next day. I said, you know, would you, and, well, would you just come out for like just, a week and a take a look at what we're doing well, and let us know if we're doing things right or if we're going in the right direction with things. Make it a big deal. And then... Downplay so the fact that it doesn't look moon and, right. Um, and a lot of the um, historians uh, looked at it and said the wording isn't and, right. Uh, it looks pretty cheesy. It just I went doesn't out look to right. California well, and, he kept and playing it, it up. And he was a very so important much energy historian. and so much he creativity. Had, uh, he's, um, he'd been the president you know, of the American Historical uh, it was, it was, uh, Association. Oh, it he, was wonderful. Uh, yeah, it, you know, it was basically uh, was I was working with the art department the and the Spain and, director, uh, like the directly. The Pope gave him um, some award. I mean, uh, he had say many, what they many wanted to see and uh, under him and you know, I'd figure out how to make it happen. Students. He so was very it was, um, it was, it was wonderful. 
uh, a lot of textbooks and he was just, he was a big deal. And for someone of that big of a deal to say that this was authentic, the weight yes. of his uh, yep. um, word yep. was huge. And so after a year, he finally sent it out and got got it analyzed. It wasn't I a very actually, good analysis. Um, and, before uh, Pirates, I had worked uh, for uh, two at, weeks. Uh, uh, Sir Francis Drake a friend Hotel. of mine, Jim Berry, the a, rigger, it's an uh, he had gotten artifact. a lead so rigging job believe. on Master and but, Commander but I found down in Mexico. In this whole and, uh, journey, so you know, when I started looking at letters between him and Delia Nuttall, I worked on that with him and then another Master rigger, this Australian guy named Igor Bjorkston. Bolton's own and, papers, uh, and I found that uh, yeah. he was the author of <laughs> uh, The Last Will and oh, yeah, Testament absolutely. of a Famous I, I Spanish Explorer. I learned an amazing amount from Igor in this really short from, period of time, and, and um, he, he, he had a real appreciation for the, treasure, John Jacob uh, the history. You know, uh, he, came he, from he said he'd learned from an old guy who had gone to sea when he was a kid, who had learned from an old guy who had gone to sea when he was a kid. A historian shouldn't do this kind of thing, but he liked to pull the wool over people's eyes, and if he was caught, and him were said, trying oh, to do everything exactly the way that it was, was done his, on uh, a ship. Way of and doing the, uh, so, uh, their that, production it, managers were play, constantly yelling at them, Everyone like, you have to make this happen faster, faster, and, and, and so make so, so much money. And, and so when I got out on Pirates, everyone that said, first well, day, I you know, sat in this big conference room with the art director and the production designer and the production designer, uh, declared a hoax the first thing he said to me was look further north because here that was and he tosses a book kind of casually across the table and it was and the first was edition of that darcy lever book that i had wow, studied I mean, when it I was is amazing here. the length and he said this is how i want everything done if you just follow this the it'll all be fine this, uh, and i said well it's, you know i certainly can do that i'd be happy to but that's going to take probably about a year to build the rig for the ship and it's going to cost you a lot of money but to try and narrow down the location I know what you, if you so, tell me what you're looking for, I can make where it is look it? What's the good answer? on film. <laughs> so that was kind of the, the creative I part of it's at that Whale whole Cove world was on the Oregon understanding Coast. This was first proposed by enough uh, Bob to be Ward able to fake it in the 1970s. Though <laughs> there's some people to make it look good, visiting but, the coast from the you know, 50s obviously and not brought it up. But cost um, what a given what a real the ship uncensored cost. account. Uh, um, it states that the fair and good bay was at 44 degrees north. This is the anonymous yeah. narrative or the Harley manuscript. And so looking in that vicinity, an excellent match with the geography of the vicinity and shape of the cove is Whale Cove. Well, after the Netherlands, that was that was just for a winter, Fort and Oregon. I was still working on the Half Moon. And, uh, um, I think at that point, I worked on board for about another three years. South. Three I mean, it, so, um, it just is yeah, such I, a good fit. I was back in New York, and, and I believe it's Whale well, Cove, oh, but I'm not 100% sure that I'm And then Pirates came along, well, went out to California for that. And after the first one, they said, well, you know, we're going to do more of these, so if you want to come out here, you know, you'll probably um, have work to for a while. Exactly what so I moved out to California, to LA, to and, and um, lived there for about five years and yeah, did the other and two. The Hundius broadside um, map has two a little three, inset the, on it. That the sequels is, and, is Drake's um, fair and, and then Good Bay. that kind and of it's dried it's up. It was like, well, I think we're done making pirate movies. Also, if you look at the Dudley manuscript charts, and that um, are in Munich, the, which uh, I did. The Maritime Museum there, uh, he in San Francisco, the Fair and Good Bay, um, San Francisco in Maritime two different National places Historical, historical it's Park, just a match. was and looking for a the depth rigor of the cove and, um, at the mouth and inside. So I it's came up for a summer. And I don't know what the chances of that, but I think the Maritime Museum up in San Francisco, uh, and then um, that it's the well permanent done. position and came up. And in what ways so do I, the surviving I accounts of Drake's circumnavigation point to this that I bought up here? And um, um, yeah, lots so of I've been, I've been here since uh, away or about lost, but we do have some accounts. What can we learn from them? I believe it is. So, um, well, one of, one of the best been great ones about was letting me take uh, some John Drake. periodic he was time off to work on other projects. Years so old on the voyage, the, and he the fourth was, pirates um, that ended up happening in uh, Hawaii. Drake's and, cabin um, boy, and they painted together uh, and so forth. And so, re rigged um, the uh, John Drake a replica was captured called the shortly after in, the voyage uh, ended, and, and uh, he went on the, the follow up voyage. He was captured on the follow up voyage, and he gave two depositions to the Spanish. 
about where they had been. Yeah, so and, that was um, a. Um, he said that they were a, uh, uh, along the northwest coast, 16, 48 uh, degrees, 40s era, and that the landing uh, um, catch. He switched it in one of his accounts, uh, but the, that was but, uh, a, it sounded like the landing was kind of a small vessel. Degrees. So um, about he, why would he lie? 55, 60 he, feet on deck. <laughs> I mean, I think that, uh, that they were he was used telling the truth a lot because this for, was before um, the sensor communication between was, between ships and uh, fleets. They were used sometimes the as bomb so catches. I they were used as John merchant Drake vessels. This particular one was even though he was a prisoner, he may be sent over to Canada again. It was like a um, so you know, a company but, of uh, um, gentlemen think, who put uh, some money together. They wanted to John they wanted to break into the, the beaver uh, yeah, fur industry um, um, in Drake, Canada, getting furs the crew made for the sketches um, during the voyage, and the they fur felt hats that were, were made. Big popular. So can they tell us anything? Um, sure. The, so the, this um, this the company map that Drake sent the ship the over to Hudson's Bay in Canada. It's long lost, but there's been copies of that. with the people. There, French got Drake a map bunch of furs, the brought them back maps. to England, and they that, show, uh, that voyage that was what was started the, the Hudson's Bay of course, Company. The scale of the map is the whole Western is Hemisphere. still in business today. But they consistently show that so Drake this was replica north was uh, degrees. was built. And the silver map of the world. Um, to which commemorate was, uh, the 400th commemoration anniversary of, of the Hudson's Boy, Bay Company, made probably uh, the silver it was that built Drake had in, captured in from Devon Spanish. at a uh, shipyard um, in Appledore, around 40 and, uh, degrees. Um, the there's various Molino globes, and uh, they were yes, exactly, um, and that's very why important. that's and why that shipyard was chosen um, to build Clube Golden Hind they because were, they had done uh, such a beautiful they job with the most such. Secret uh, and the there they, again, and they, so they had two old guys who were, I think they were in their 80s, who uh, had been riggers, and, part of it <laughs> and they got them out of retirement, on, and, and they're the ones who rigged the, the ship, the both ears and non such. But it, it does show that he was much farther north than 42 degrees north. So I think my favorite part of your book is your mm -hmm. comparison of Drake uh, and Francis Fletcher, Drake's chaplains description of the Native American people they meet with archaeological and anthropological evidence of Native American cultures on the West Coast. You've tried to find uh, a match. Well, what do Drake and Fletcher's the, the accounts The pirates describe? thing was kind of fun because... Um, well, they, they were with the Native the, Americans for either five for instance, or ten the flying weeks, Dutchman and they described in the pirate their movies, clothing um, and their regalia. I was able to do everything... Dutch houses. style for rigging example, on there. The, um, <laughs> they said that their houses would were notice. dig round. They were semi underground, <laughs> yeah, and that they but it was just fun. had um, so plank roofs. Whereas the other vessels, the you know, in the in the and movies had, and and vessels like Nonsuch well, and Golden exactly Hind that have worked on our for British the houses on vessels, the central they're, they're and southern Oregon coast. Particular things the, that um, about the, the way parts of the rigging are put together that identify them, and they really identifies the time period and the country. Tree where they're from. So hole it's, in the ground. Um, then they put the yeah, planks that's where it gets up, really touching detailed. each other on the top <laughs> and sealed it with uh, soil and moss put on top. That's an exact match. Drake said that inside the houses yeah. it was like being in the scuttle of a ship. And that yeah, is a, a, a cozy it's kind of fun. The, uh, I've been in contact that, uh, with the these, uh, these archaeologists who are built. Uh, excavating and on the, the California Black coast, the Miwok the people Revenge, had off of North mat Canada. houses or grass houses. And periodically, they send me pictures frames. of things, and, and they're like, "What is not this?" A, not even close <laughs> and, to what um, Drake was describing. It's, oh, it's wonderful. Uh, Drake also said yeah, the people yeah, had exactly. canoes. He didn't describe the canoes exactly, <laughs> um, but canoes. But it's, it's fun. That yeah, you know, I told them like vessel. from one on little the dead eye, coast, the you can tell the size of a ship. You can tell the the vessels that the country was likely from, what era it was from. So there's lots of details uh, like that Thule that rats. really identify. They didn't have um, enough wood there. Once you um, kind of to, get the picture of how these rigging large evolved. wooden canoes. And on the yeah. Northwest Coast, wooden canoes were ubiquitous and they, they were famous. They're great. Uh, even today, they have canoe races. And yes. These are just the so most beautiful here at the Maritime switch, Museum, uh, it's a much, much bigger vessel Made called the Belle Clutha. She was built in Scotland, Scotland in 1886. Um, the other thing and, they um, described are the baskets. Uh, uh, 
uh, you know, all the same they, features are there. Had, uh, it's just how they've um, evolved they in the 19th century. So uh, instead of beads a lot and, uh, of wooden masks had, and, and wooden spars, they were steel. Well, and instead of a lot of the things that used to be baskets hemp that are rope decorated or manila with rope the, the are twisted, wire on board. Uh, uh, feathers uh, of red-headed so woodpeckers um, that are wound around sinew strings a lot bigger. <laughs> and then embroidered onto um, their baskets. Yeah, um, but it's still the same they, things. they usually use either silk, thread, Yes, or, yeah, that's um, that's permanently uh, uh, docked or, at the Maritime Museum. Or red beads to do the same sort of type of design, but the ancestor of... of well, at the moment, things are strange. Matted, <laughs> red... Uh, <laughs> feathers of the uh, um, red-headed woodpeckers. So yeah, we went through, we were shut down match, completely including the, for uh, the use of plant um, fluff. A couple of months Drake where the, basically the every other day somebody would go in just to make sure had, the ships were still tied up to the pier and hadn't and sunk or burned or anything. Was um, and now we're and getting back into it. We've been, to trade, um, and this plant we've been fluff working, might have been something like that Rick he and I have been working for past couple of months. A long it's pretty much full time, but the park is still closed um, to the public. And so, on the Oregon um, coast, the Native Labor Americans to get a lot of work done that, for all sorts of things. You know, tarring, they rigging, and, and painting into, things, and, um, and things that to when the public's uh, there, it's a little difficult. So we've been doing a lot of and, uh, a lot of maintenance work clothing. on the ships. And uh, on uh, on the California coast, there's no Maybe. recorded uh, note of of any use of plant fluff. And here on the Oregon coast and the California, yep. or Oregon and Washington coast in the northwest part of yep. the U.S., um, this is well known, <laughs> and it goes on and on. There's several other things that uh, that I brought out in the book that are good matches. Yeah, I was going to say it sounds like when you compare Drake and Fletcher's accounts <laughs> to what we know about the variety of Native American cultures and languages um, which existed along the west coast. That there is quite a good match, is that fair to say? Yeah, I think it's quite a good match, um, and um, well, I think it's I, like I said. I think the, it's the irrefutable. The main thing that keeps me I'd, interested I'd like is that I'm always learning, still always learning new things. California, that, you know, old things actually. I'm learning old things, and, say, no, and that's that's you're wrong, Melissa, really fascinating. This this um, list, but I don't think they can. And and also just and the how title of your book. You know, I started north. focusing on this one little thing, more ship rigging. It, which right. um, but it is right. interesting how many to do with Drake being confused for a god is connections that right? it has That's to everything it. else. Well, you, you know, know, Drake's calling card was art, to sail into uh, a bay and, and uh, shoot um, off his cannon. It's uh, so, um, it's neat to be able to tie Native things Americans together and to see the these Oregon connections. Coast had and, never um, seen Europeans. You know, the um, they did have a tradition for me, that it, rigging has been um, the way that thundered, I have learned you so much about the past. Thunder go north. So it's uh, 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 and it is go an evolution. Up north where the people mistreat your fish because they believe the thunder god was the god of all fishes, <laughs> and there's there's. Um, Rivalries yeah. <laughs> among the Native Americans on the Oregon and Washington coast because one group feels that they butcher fish the wrong way and salmon isn't very important anyway. So um, they make Thank fun you. of each other about yeah. how they butcher their fish. So uh, they have this idea. Uh, or they do. Had I'd, I'd love to get back on there again. They have this idea <laughs> that when it thundered, it was God. It. it was the thunder God punishing Thank them you. for mistreating Thanks. the fish, either. Um, throwing the guts uh, on the ground instead of in the fire or in the water or doing something that would offend the fish and and thunder, the god of all fish. So um, when it thundered, they'd say, thunder, go north where the, where the people mistreat your fish. Don't strike us here. So um, when I was reading these ethnographic accounts, I thought, oh my gosh, that they thought he was thunder. So I looked deeper into it and when it thunders you're supposed to throw things in the fire and sacrifice them to the god thunder because they'll they'll float up in the smoke and go to thunder and so when drake landed and they met him and they they believed he was thunder at least that's what i postulate they they started throwing stuff in the fire to him even though he was standing right there they were burning their baskets and their their necklaces and they were chanting and and drake was like stop it guys don't do it and so um 
he had a hard time convincing them that he wasn't a god. And they never were convinced that he was just a man. And they, and even as he was leaving, they built this big bonfire and they were throwing valuables on it, as sending him these valuables um, because that's what they thought that he wanted. They were, they were um, uh, uh, trying to make up for examples of them not... Uh, taking care of the fish in the right way, or maybe they dropped a fish one time and, and didn't take care of it the way tradition told them to. And so they had guilty conscience. So they were making these sacrifices and saying, go north, don't strike us here. I mean, it's just absolutely fascinating. And if you're as fascinated by this as I am, I really do recommend going out and reading the book um, where Melissa goes into incredible detail about all of this. Um, I actually want to read a short section from the book now, something which caught my attention. Uh, there is a remote but nevertheless real possibility that the elaborate embroidery and even the cut of Depot Charlie's pants and jacket could in fact be cultural memes of the Elizabethan visitors who wore embroidered doublets, jerkins and breeches. So what's going on here? Who is Depot Charlie? What is a cultural meme? And why is that interesting in relation to the landing con controversy? Uh, Depot Charlie was a Native American. He was born in a village at the mouth of the Rogue River. He was a well-known tribal, tribal leader on the Siletz Reservation. Um, and he also uh, owned land around Well Cove, including several large parcels. Um, uh, and a cultural meme is uh, a memory that is kept in a visual way. So, for example, in Hawaii, there they found carved effig effigies that predate the voyage of Captain James Cook in 1778. And these effigies look like lions or stylized lions. And so they, th they think that there had been other visitors who had uh, maybe a figurehead or something. And so the natives in Hawaii s picked up that idea. And there was also... Um, uh, gourd helmets and so forth that they think looked like the Spanish helmets. And so we know there had been European visitors prior to Cook in Hawaii, and they, they're only evidenced by these cultural memes. Um, so, uh, when I, when I understood that I should look for a cultural meme, I started looking at the earliest photographs we have of the Native Americans on the, on the coast. And, um, I looked at, Depot Charlie's um, pants and the cut of his vest. And these, uh, these garments are not typically Native American type of garments. And they looked very different to me. And it's, it's a pretty remote possibility, I have to say. But um, the fleur-de-lis on his pants, the decorations and the plants look in, in his pants look like uh, the fleur-de-lis on the Queen's standard, just sort of a random upside down, up and down, if you look at that. And I might be reading too much into that. So I'm heavily qualifying that. But people should look at that and think about it. Uh, it's a fascinating theory either way. Uh, so there's another great section where you compare the possibility that Drake's crew either became acquainted with ground squirrels or muskrats. What on earth have muskrats got to do with narrowing down the location of Drake's landing? <laughs> well, this has been part of the debate in California. They they believe, or what the Drake's Bay group believes that Drake was describing an animal that uh, uh, is the pocket gopher there, and the pocket gopher is it's about as big as a hamster and uh, has a short little tail, and uh, Drake was describing an animal that um, had a long bald tail. Hands, hands like a mole. It carried its food in its cheeks, and it had a beautiful pelt. And the Native Americans used this pelt for their their cloaks. Even the king wore it as his cloak. And uh, they also ate the bodies of the uh, of, of this uh, fur bearing animal. So uh, the Drake's Bay people say it was a pocket gopher. The people who believe it was in San Francisco Bay say, oh, it was a squirrel. And so they argue over over the the golden fleece was the title of this argument, uh, uh, an article describing this. But 
on the Oregon coast and in Oregon, uh, one of the most common mammals we have is the muskrat. And it has a long bald tail, hands like a mole, carries its food in its cheeks. And the Native Americans used its pelt um, ubiquitously because it, it was lightweight, warm, and waterproof. And in the Northwest, waterproof is very important. <laughs> and so uh, even uh, the early explorers that came here and wrote uh, accounts of the Native Americans describe the, uh, the the muskrat fur cloaks that the people wore. They also wore, you know, beaver skin pelts and others and deer skin and so forth. But um, the muskrat fur was very important to them. And so um, Drake and Fletcher described this uh, animal as similar to the Barbary coney or the Cape Hyrax, which looks a lot like a muskrat and nothing like a pocket gopher or a squirrel. And I know in England you have squirrels, and if they had seen a squirrel, they would have said a squirrel. Mm. So um, I'm I'm pretty sure that that uh, they were describing the uh, muskrat, and you know there had already been a fur trade started on the East Coast. Uh, France was importing some furs from that area, and uh, um, I think Drake was looking for commodities, and this. Uh, Muskrat fur is still a commodity. You still can um, uh, go out and trap muskrats and sell the fur. I mean, it, it's a it's a it's a money making uh, uh, a thing, and I think that uh, Drake recognized it as such. So, as I said earlier, I mean, from muskrats to maps to uh, cultural memes. I mean, I think you've used a fantastic array of evidence to to back up your theory. Do you think that we're ever going to solve the mystery? Do you think we're going to get agreement among historians or are there always going to be those who say, no, he was a California boy? Uh, I don't know. It's it's pretty hard to remove Drake from California. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty hard. I'm getting some pushback and that's okay. That's okay. Um, I know that there's more information out there. I thought that... Once my book comes out and it's it's uh, more widely read, people will say, well, wait a minute, when we were digging at this site, we found this and we didn't understand that that was a historic artifact. And we just thought maybe it was from, you know, a, a stray vessel from Japan. Well, anyway, so there might be some more things bubbling up. Um, and I know there's probably more information in, uh, in uh, archives in the UK for example, the Harley manuscript manuscript that I found, um, I think that if someone looked at the handwriting and to, and looked to see if there's any other matches of a known scribe in Hacklute's employment, that would really nail it down. Um, also, Drake was given these long uh, shell bead necklaces. I wonder if he took one back to Buckland Abbey and one of them broke and they swept it out and an archaeological excavation might have found one of those little shell beads and then we could find it and source it and see if it was from California or Oregon maybe. That's a possibility. Um, I think maybe someday there'll be some more excavation around uh, Whale Cove or up and down the coast near there. There was a tsunami that kind of wiped it all out in 1700, but in some of the higher areas, there might be an archaeological site where intact uh, 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 sediments may reveal an English artifact or a coin or something, but that's, that's for the future. Well, there we go. A call of call to arms. Uh, for historians <laughs> and archaeologists, the search for the fair and good bay continues. Um, Melissa, it's been absolutely fantastic having you uh, on the show today. It's been really fascinating, um, and your book Thunder Go North is is a is a brilliant read. Well, thank you so much, Peter. It's been so wonderful to be on here, and best wishes to you. That was the Golden Hind podcast. For more information, head over to our website, goldenhind.co.uk. Remember, there's a letter E on the end of Golden Hind. You'll find videos, blogs, educational resources, and of course, all the details you'll need to come and visit us. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks for listening. <laughs>